we made it happy friday um we are almanac and this is tea time with almanac um in about 30 minutes we're going to be going live with our crystal party our day before halloween crystal party we're super excited about it um i'm emily thompson i'm the founder of almanac supply co and i'm mary wright i'm the business manager of almanac supply co and i'm david aka woody <laughs> <laughs> We have been so excited about this day before Halloween crystal party, um, and we it, a lot went in this month into sort of curating and scheduling our crystal parties. Last week we did a fun witchy vibe party. This week we're focusing on stones of Pluto and Scorpio. So I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about those themes, but I figure before we get started. Um, See how you guys are doing. Day before Halloween, you guys excited about this? David is obviously very excited about this. <laughs> Mary? I'm excited. You would be able to tell by my outfit too if like, you know, we could see the whole thing. Right. But we've got it we've got a theme going on here of some orange and black. I think. Mary and I, I came think. in today matching. Again. <laughs> but not entirely. Right? Like a we um it works together. Yeah. Right? He compliments. I have orange pants on. That's what you can't see. Right. So orangey, kind of the same as Emily's jumper there. Right. And then we have Woody. And then we have Woody. Right. When given the option <laughs> to dress up, David was obviously the most gun ho. Yeah. Super excited about dressing up as Woody. Might as well. I'm getting the most out of this this year. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. And even earlier today, David got to do his favorite thing. Yep. In his Woody costume, yes. and that is Crack a Geode. That was fun. So on Instagram Live today, we did Crack a Geode. We did not share it because we're actually going to do it as part of the Crystal Party today. Um, but it was a fun morning. It was a fun morning around Almanac. Um, so I just want to say hello to everyone is here. Feel free to hop in the live chat and let us let us know how you're doing. I'd love to know who is here. Oh hi, Lynn is here. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to see everyone today. Okay, so I actually do also want to follow up on something we talked about last week, and that is that, um, oh, and Laurie is here as well. Hello. Hey, Laurie. Um, that is, you were planning on going camping last weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, is this news? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? I feel like for weeks we've topic. talked about how, like, fall is here. Uh, it's cooling down outside. We've talked about camping. David and I have talked about camping. We have mm -hmm. not gone camping. Mm -hmm. Mary, however, actually did it. So you went camping <laughs> last weekend. I did go camping last weekend. It was it was really fun, actually. It did rain, so it, it did rain. That's always like I I like we talked about, and even going further back into crystal parties, me and my bad luck. <laughs> I'm not a lucky person. It always rains when I camp, like even if it's not in the forecast, it happens. So it rained, but we had some like, there were some like covered areas. Mm -hmm. So we like put a fire pit under one of them. I don't nice. know if that's by the book or whatever, but, it's um, fine. and we roasted some marshmallows and things and it was really fun. Honestly, nice. it made it feel very like. Okay, it's fall now. Yeah. No? Right, officially here. Mm -hmm. Well, I will continue living vicariously through your camping because <laughs> we have not gone camping. We did, however, do a little embracing of the seasons. Um, I guess last weekend where we made apple fritters. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. They were delicious. So we are actually gluten free. So whenever, I, so that makes it even more exciting. No, they don't think they're delicious. <laughs> Right? So um, I have been looking at some recipes for apple fritters and things. It could just like apple vibes. You know, everyone, is anyone else like just nose deep in apples right now or want to be? Is that just me? That's right. Mary doesn't like apples. I, ever, I don't like cooked apples. I like fresh <laughs> apples, but my partner loves them. So when you're talking about them, I'm thinking of yes. them. Well, yes. apple fritters are not super difficult to make. I've made them in the past whenever I, we I were not gluten free. Good. Um, so I did a little research and found some recipes for gluten-free apple fritters and spent some time last weekend making um, a gluten-free yeast dough, which 
Whoa. is always a little iffy. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times and it can be kind of hit and miss. Um, hit or miss, but we did, uh, we did them and they were a success and they were so good. And I was able to make enough dough and keep it in the refrigerator so that for a couple of days we were able to make some apple fritters. Yes. It was very fall. Super success. I thought you were biting off a little bit more than you could chew, I guess, because like (laughs) all those things like (laughs) fritters are so tasty, but like gluten-free and like making the I was mm-hmm. so happy with the way they turned out right they were good I've never thought of a like gluten-free something with yeast right. still I didn't know that was even an option yeah since we're not gluten-free so that just sounds like a whole science experiment going on there right <laughs> for sure there yeah. is it is a science experiment and I love to cook um I cook a lot I'm I have baked a lot of things, but I would never call myself a baker. Also, always very hit or miss whenever I'm baking. Um, I've done gluten-free yeast things before, and I don't understand the science of baking at all. I, like, have no idea. Um, But it worked. Whatever it was, it worked. Do you describe yourself as someone who reads a recipe? (laughs) (gasps) David! I know where you're going with this! (laughs) Tell me, I, I no, it's just funny. So I am very. Uh, I will always read the recipe mm-hmm. and follow it to a T. He Which, will follow the instructions. He like we're putting the. He always reads the instructions. There's no like intuitive cooking with David. It is like if it says a quarter teaspoon of salt, I'm putting in a quarter teaspoon of salt, no matter what it tastes like. Well, Which high five. That's perfect for baking, though. Because that's, what, that's who right. you need to be for baking. Cooking, not so much. You don't have to be that person. Baking, right. it's got to be exact. It drives right. me crazy. For sure. So, mm-hmm. same. So, whenever I'm cooking, like, I'm the sort of, like, I will read through a recipe and be like, mm, okay. <laughs> and then just sort of do whatever I want to do. Uh, because I am a very intuitive cook not baker and so i always take like my throwing out of instructions with cooking into my baking and Mm -hmm. it doesn't always turn out very well Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh also linda austin is here hi Uh, she (laughs) says hello to my newest addiction (laughs) right hi mom (laughs) Um, howdy partner (laughs) did someone poison the watering hole (laughs) That's perfect. That's no, perfect. There is a snake in your boot. Yeah. Um, she did say that she also made a yummy pan sheet apple crumble. Mm. That sounds Ooh. tasty. That's fancy. Super tasty. I like a crumble. Same. Same. So I will say though, now that we are in like the season of cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> We're in cinnamon season. Um, my little foray into apple fritters has me planning on doing that for cinnamon rolls in the near future. <laughs> okay. Yes, Mary? I just I just can't wait to see. I, I did one of those. I spent four hours making from scratch cinnamon rolls one day and did that whole thing, and they were delicious. They were uh-huh. They were worth every bit of it or whatever, even though, you know, normally I'm just like, here's the two. But so if four hours goes into regular cinnamon rolls, <laughs> I want to see this gluten-free, like, I need pictures. I I'll, need I'll bring you one. one. I'll okay. bring you one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I say go for it. We'll see. You did fritters. I did fritters. Why not? Why not cinnamon rolls? So again, I'm so excited. We've been gluten-free for probably seven years now. And like on and off gluten-free. We can, we can have gluten. We will occasionally, but for the whole gluten or for the most part, gluten-free. Whenever we went gluten-free seven years ago, there was no alternatives. Like you could not get gluten-free crackers, you could not get gluten-free pasta. Like if you were gluten-free, you just ate none of those things. So uh, it's such a like change of scenery, I guess, to be able to Google things like gluten-free cinnamon rolls and have options, let alone like a single one. So I'm excited to, I'm excited that the the blogging world, (laughs) I suppose, has caught up with my eating habits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that. I feel like for the first like four years of trying gluten-free foods, uh, it was a lot of... Uh, like, they just made the thing, but it wasn't good. Like There was yeah. gluten-free pizza, but it wasn't good pizza. Like, mm-hmm. it, I nice. still haven't had a good gluten-free yeah. pizza, <laughs> I will say. But yeah, for sure. Like Those first couple of like tries of especially big brands coming out with gluten-free mm-hmm. stuff was 
not good. So I do love that now we can we can do all the things, eat all the things, whatever, and have really good gluten free options. Yeah, still celebrate fall with your baking. Okay. Oh, oh, we have a good one here. Okay, couple. Uh, Linda says, if you get the ratio of cinnamon to roll correct, it will be yummy and I will be there. <laughs> Nini's cracking some jokes here. <laughs> For sure. I have this, um, have this, what is it? It's a quiche. A quiche that I usually make around Christmas, mm-hmm. usually Christmas Eve. And uh, we had Linda Austin, a.k.a. Nini, uh, there a couple of years ago. And she was asking me what the secret was. And I was like, it's all about getting the correct cream to egg ratio. And mm-hmm. now that haunts me (laughs) but it is it's all about those ratios um Mm -hmm. tasha says this obsidian sphere i'm dying tasha's here great hey tasha right i will also (laughs) say look it's on like a little spinny base which i think is so fabulously extra um but we've been holding on to this guy and excited about bringing him out for uh scorpio season for months Mm -hmm. so obsidian sphere yeah those little silver sheets. Right, I was wondering if that's can you on see the, it? There, I don't there, know if they sure. can see it on the video. Was that just turning by itself? No, I was turning. Oh, that oh, was okay. you. Because <laughs> I didn't see your hand from this side. No. And I was thinking, what is happening? Last week was the magic party. That wouldn't be right. happening this week. You never know. You never know. So yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think you can see it in the it video. Would be right here. Mm-hmm. It's like but if you look right here, where my finger is. There's a silver sheen, Mm -hmm. little spot on this buddy, and it is so glorious, so glorious. I love this thing. You know, when we got this uh, beautiful sphere, I remember being like, maybe we should ask for a stand because they didn't just include one, and we were like, what are we going to put it on? (laughs) And then when they gave us one and it spun. Yeah, we were like, score. I never would have known to ask for a spinning stand by any means. Um, Also, Tasha says, hey, Mary, and hey, David. (laughs) Hey, hey. Perfect. Okay, so I do want to talk about Scorpio and Pluto a bit. um, Because we've talked about this a little bit before. Astrology is one of my hobbies. Um, I have been watching (laughs) for many moons. For years, for years, I've been diving into my little astrology hobby, and 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 for me, it is a lot deeper than just knowing what someone's sign is. Though I am always curious, I'm just also not usually the person who's going to ask and wait for someone else to ask, and then I'm gonna like break things apart whenever they, uh, whenever you <laughs> let me know. Um, but we have been under a very heavy Pluto time. Um, literally always Pluto is just heavy and always there Mm -hmm. Um, but really over really probably the past year um, me personally I had a very heavy Pluto time for probably the two years before that so I've been looking into and sort of learning from the energies of Pluto very personally for a couple of years Um, and it started out feeling very overwhelming Pluto is a sign of very like strong serious energies it is the planet of transformation the planet of power um the planet of sort of death and rebirth like nothing fun (laughs) basically it's not like money and love um it's 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 really hard difficult stuff but i will say over the past couple of years i've kind of learned to love it um in a way where i i was really excited about putting this party together and both because scorpio being ruled by pluto shares a lot of those energies um, but also we're still just in such a pluto heavy time and i will say that um, if you believe in this sort of thing, um, in astrology and the planets, and that it is either a mirror or sort of a cause and effect scenario, um, there are some things that have happened with Pluto that can even play into quite heavily the way we are currently experiencing our world in terms of the pandemic and Mm -hmm. the unrest and all of those things. Um, Back in February, I think it was, there was a conjunction of Pluto and Saturn and Jupiter, which is a lot of very big, heavy hitting planets (sighs) all at once. And then almost Mm -hmm. immediately after the entire world shut down. Um, And I remember reading something 
I wasn't reading it. I was listening to a podcast. Um, a friend of mine, her name is Rachel. She runs a website called Aeolian Heart. She has a podcast and I cannot in this moment remember what it is called, but um, you can look her up if you would like. She did an interview with another astrologer where they were talking about the things that were, uh, were happening around that time. And the astrologer that she was talking about was saying that another astrologer had published in a magazine 10 years ago or so, um, looking ahead at the 2020 astrology and in that magazine had wrote um, that something big would happen and that mm -hmm. the world would refer to time as before 2020 and after 2020. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, excuse me, but... <laughs> Right? And so, and Pluto does play into that so very, very much. It is also a very slow moving planet. So these things take a very long time to unfold. Pluto is known as the planet that like uncovers hidden depths. It is the god of the underworld, um, which in terms of crystals is very much so aligned. Um, so, and the, the idea is that astrology and the planets, like it all it all works for the purpose of evolution. So even though things are difficult, death is not fun. Um, mm -hmm. What is born out of it is an elevation of what came before it. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Bigger and better. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is kind of a really heavy, um, a really heavy topic. It is Scorpio season. Uh, Halloween is tomorrow, which mm -hmm. has... Um, some history and some very deep and to some people disturbing um, traditions. So we're going to talk about rocks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Tasha says here, well, damn, it really is like a BC and AD feeling right mm -hmm. now. Absolutely. It really Absolutely. Is. There's some like, it feels big and weird and and I think I think we will all be able to definitely sort of recall our lives in terms of before 2020 and after 2020. I don't think that this is going to be something where we're going to easily be able to blend our lives before and after. And <laughs> right, we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, so how's that make you guys feel? <laughs> <laughs> David's like David has stress to base over here. Uh, you brought up, I was not thinking about some of that seriousness, but. That is a lot of good things. Yeah. Pluto and, don't play. Yeah. It's also, I think it's really interesting, the um, crystals that we bought in Denver, not really being aware of all that. Um, like that zebra calcite is like right on point with dealing with that and like bringing up your everything to deal with. Um, yeah. And how I didn't even realize that when we found it and how it just, I don't know, maybe it found us. But... Right? I mean, you are correct. A lot of what is on the table today, actually, almost everything on the table, eh, more than half of what is on the table today is new to us. So it's the first time we've carried it. Um, and it came from our most recent rock call. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. Like, as above, so below, right? Like these sort of things come in, they are coming out of the earth potentially at the time in which we need them at a very Pluto rich time. Um, and we're sharing them with you during Scorpio season. So maybe there is some like extra big magic happening right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also just rocks, but very pretty rocks. Um, all right, so we do have about five minutes left. If anyone does have any questions or comments or if that brought anything up for anyone, <laughs> It should. It's Pluto. That's yeah. what it does. Um, or also, you know, Scorpio. If anyone has any Scorpio friends, I think you've mentioned before you attract Scorpios, right? I do. My son is a Scorpio. <laughs> as Perfect. Well. Yeah. He's he's <laughs> total little Scorpio. Uh -huh. Totally is. He's. But like, it, he's also taught me a lot about Scorpios. I didn't understand. Um, I really didn't understand them before. I really didn't. But now I'm like easy into it. And I'm like, okay. So like, it's not necessarily what you think. They can be some of the kindest, sweetest, um, most sensitive souls, really. Yeah. They really can be hurt very deeply, pretty easily. Yeah. Which is not something I ever thought of before. I think I had it was like told differently about them or something. But he is. Yeah. He's also super intuitive. 
Mm -hmm. He's always been really intuitive and like, um, (laughs) weirdly, it's probably not the right word, but like weirdly mature Mm -hmm. and like insightful for his age. Like I remember some of the things he was saying to me when he was like a toddler. I was just like, where did you get that from? (laughs) Old soul. Yeah. Old soul. Old soul. Erica is here. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. She's saying that her daughter is a Scorpio. Oh, fun. Right? <laughs> um, my, one of my best friends is a Scorpio and like maybe even a triple Scorpio. It's like she's like real Scorpio. Mm. And I love her. Like mm-hmm. very kind, very giving, but also very emotional, also very intuitive. Because mm-hmm. um, Scorpio is a water sign, so very emotional and intuitive. Um, but she's also the kind of person where if I'm sitting down to have a conversation with her, she's immediately going to go to the deepest topic possible. Like, right? I mean, it, she will go there so quickly. And I think that's just like, that can be one of the really cool things about Scorpio. It can also be one of the like very like keep them away from me things about Scorpio for some people, for people who are, um, who have a hard time going that deep very mm-hmm. or that quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, Tasha says, my mother is a Scorpio and she embodies their characteristics to the extreme. Um, very intuitive, very secretive, deeply mistrustful, right? Um, and <laughs> Linda Austin says, OMG, I am married to a Scorpio. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed you are. That's all you need to say. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, um, so yes, there's so much, I, I have learned to love Scorpios very mm-hmm. much as well. Some of the most, um, yeah, some of the most kindest, but also like really go there deep mm-hmm. immediately people I know um, are Scorpios. I love them. But also y'all need to chill. (laughs) Take a joke. Right? That's what I I tell my kid all the time. I was just kidding. Right? I took it too far. I love it. Well, the stones we have on the table today, which we will be getting to in just a few moments, um, are all stones for Pluto and Scorpio. Um, and it's interesting, you know, as I was going through my own, so my like two year, very heavy Scorpio season, um, Tasha says, please chill. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, my very heavy Scorpio season, um, I became best friends with a (laughs) black tourmaline palm stone. Um, and I actually didn't put any black tourmaline on the table today. Um, mostly because we've done it so many times over the past couple of weeks because I feel like everyone needs black tourmaline right now. I know. I'm getting there, David. But there is some tourmalinated quartz. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. On the table. So even though there's no specific black tourmaline, um, we do have tourmalinated quartz, which is black tourmaline in clear, uh, clear quartz crystal. So there is some of that, too. I'm excited about this. Mm-hmm. Totally Pluto. Okay. I learned to be friends with Pluto because you have no choice or you do have a choice, but don't choose to not <sighs> for better or worse for better or worse. Um, <laughs> all right. So we are going to sort of go dark for half a moment for about five minutes while we set up for the crystal party. Um, Very excited about getting this started. So excited to see everyone here and super chatty. This is gonna be a fun one today. And any sort of last thoughts or questions? I got so Mm -hmm. many questions now, but I feel like I need (laughs) (laughs) brought up a lot. I do have to say, if anyone is interested in some like deep Pluto reading, uh, one of my favorite astrologers is a man named Stephen Forrest. Um, and he has written a book. Actually, if you're interested in sort of an overview of astrology, his book, Inner Sky, is one of my favorites. Um, it's like a lot of astrology books these days are very easy to read, I guess, like, it, and, and dumbed down is really, I think, what I even want to say. His is easy to read, but not dumbed down, um, which I super appreciate. Um, So he has a book called Inner Sky, which is a really great overview of all the signs and all the planets. But he also has a book called The Book of Pluto. (laughs) And I've read it and it's amazing. So if anyone, but it's also like pretty heady. I mean, it's a book about Pluto. Um, So if anyone is interested, I have (laughs) read that book. I do think it is good. Um, So feel free to check it out. Mm-hmm. I really want to go there. 
But for now, stones for Pluto and Scorpio. All right, we're going to go dark for a few minutes. See you back here at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can stay. We're just going to change the screen. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, let's do it. Hello, and we're back. David, what are you doing in that hole? He just disappears. Welcome, welcome. This is Almanac Supply Co's Crystal Party. Um, I'm Emily. I'm going to be running this. I'm joined again by David slash Woody over here, who's going to be running crystals for us. And then Mary is over here. She's going to be hanging out with you in chat. Um, and I'm excited to get this party going. Like I said, we have been, uh, we've been very excited and very purposeful about putting these crystal parties in the order that they currently are. We are in Scorpio season. Um, so doing a party of Scorpio and Pluto stones is wildly appropriate. Um, and we're excited to dive in. So the purpose of these crystal parties is to give you a virtual shopping experience where you get to pick just the crystals that you want. Uh, because the world is what it is right now, um, we cannot open to um, as much shopping as we usually do. So this gives you the chance, instead of just like 
buying a listing on our website and us picking out the crystal for you, though we do love doing that, um, this gives you the ability to choose just the crystal that you want. We're going to be here for about an hour today going over or showing you all of the crystals that are in... Um, on the table, which I will be showing you in a second. And then at the end, we will open to virtual shopping. So if there is any additional things that you would like to see that are not in this, um, that are not in this party, you see whole wall of crystals over here. We will pull out for you whatever it is that you would like to see. Now, I do wanna share with you a bit about how this works. So if you are watching this crystal party anywhere that is not YouTube, so if you are on our website um, or anywhere where it may be streaming or embedded at, click through to the YouTubes um, because you have to be on the YouTube page in order to participate. We use the live chat section that is to the right of the video, not the comment section at the bottom. Um, for you to claim the crystals that you would like. I also recommend that you go ahead and open up our collections page um, or our crystal party collection. So you'll see a little URL here, almanacsupplyco.com slash crystal dash party. We have all of the products that we're showing today listed there. It's important that you have that open as well. So whenever I get started, I will be showing you crystal by crystal. Um, we have... 35-ish crystals on the table today. Um, each one of them are numbered. So as I show you one, I'll be like, this is crystal number one. I'll let you know how much it is. Crystal number two, all the way through. Whenever you see a crystal that you want to claim, comment in the chat section, sold and the number. So you'll do sold five or sold 32 or whatever it may be. Whenever you do that, we will take that crystal, set it aside with your name, and then you will need to, at the same time, add that crystal to your cart. Mary will be in the chat sharing uh, links to the crystals along the way. Also, all of them are listed right here at crystal-party. Um, so we'll be adding them to the cart, and then whenever we are done, you will check out. And on Monday morning, we will package up everything and send it along the way. At crystal-party, you will also find the rules written there, or if you're confused along the way, feel free to message Mary and she will help you out. I do also want to say we've had a lot of people who are watching these shows afterwards, so later, the replays on YouTube, and welcome to anyone who is not here with us live. Um, if you do want to claim anything that has not been claimed during the party, um, we keep our table set up until about midday on Monday. So over the weekend, if you're checking out this video replay or if you're here live and you decide you actually do want that thing that you didn't claim live, feel free to shoot us an email and let us know what numbers you want. And if it is still available, we will happily... Um, get that together for you at that time. But we cannot promise that anything will be available after, um, after Monday. We'll put them all back on the shelf and otherwise available. So you'll check out the end of the party and then we'll ship everything out on Monday. Again, any questions, feel free to let us know and we will we'll help you out. Okay. I'm gonna show you what's on the table to go over some things. So we're going to do something a little different today. Um, a little bit fun and different because this is Pluto, God of the Underworld. Um, David wanted to do some geodes. <laughs> we'll claim that that's why, though really it's just because he's in his geo geode cracking <laughs> outfit <laughs> back there and he really wanted to crack some geodes today. So I'm actually going to start out with three items that are not currently, um, they're not numbered. So I'm going to call them geode one, two, and three, and I'm going to show them to you, not showing you the inside of them. Oh, I love it. Sarah says, you all look exceptionally nice today. Thank you. Halloween brings out the best in us. For sure. David says, so kind. Um, love it. So three geodes on the table. I'm going to show them to you not opened. So one of the fun things about doing geodes, and we have a geode cracker. Whenever we're doing our markets and things, we take our geode cracker. You can pick out your rock. We, you buy the rock. We crack it open. And whatever it looks like, you take it home. And it's so much fun. Everyone loves doing it from kids to adults, couples, 
old folks <laughs> like geodes are one of the uh one of those things that transcends like all demographics everyone loves cracking open a geode so what it is that what it is that we are going to do is show these geodes to you not open and if you'd like to claim one also all three of these are great i would not put a crappy geode on the table <laughs> um all of these are really wonderful so i'm going to give i'm going to show them to you closed and if anyone would like to claim one closed you are more than welcome to. I'm going to go through the party, and if no one or if there are any left here that have not been claimed, I will show them to you open, and you can claim them if you would like. So that's going to be a fun little thing. We'll see how it goes. Why not? Also, Tasha says, paired with his costume, it seems pretty appropriate. Woody the excavator. <laughs> Him. Oh, the prospector. The prospector. Yeah, prospector. <laughs> I love it. David does want to get a prospector outfit. That has actually been a conversation, just so we know. Okay. So let's start with these geodes. I'm going to just going to show them to you like this, and then I'm going to show you the whole table. So I have geode one, two, and three. Oh man, you can see that one. That's no fair. I cheated. Well, you've gotten a no. You haven't gotten a sneak peek of that one. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so we're going to start out with, I don't know which ones these are. David, you're going to have to come instruct me. So is David is the geode master, not me. This is a Chihuahua Tronca. This is a Chihuahua Tronca. And you can see it has some really pretty, even on the outside, which is kind of, it's a good one. <laughs> Typically, these They're are a light blue color. Okay, so this is a Chihuahua Tronca. We're going to call this geode one so you can say sold geode one if you would like it. Um, it is $20. And this one is it's already cut here. You'll break it apart two pieces. Super pretty. So if anyone would like to claim one of these unseen, which is the fun of geodes, guys, feel free to say geode one and it will be yours. So this is a Chihuahua Tronca for $20 in case anyone is interested in playing this game. Who knows, this could be fun, this could be the lamest game ever. It's not the lamest game, these are beautiful. And you won't even be able to see it till you get it home. Till it's in your, in your hands, you could open it up and have that moment. So, Geode One, Chihuahua Tronca, $20. All right, we have a second one here. This is the one we cracked this morning on Instagram. <laughs> on IGTV. This is a coconut geode. See, quite large, also cut, so very even halves here. I'm going to peek inside. It's very pretty. Very sparkly. Um, this one is $30, so geode 2, excuse me, it's 43. Correct? $43. So geode 2 is 43 in case anyone is interested in the joy of secret geode. So no, geode 2 is 43. Geode 3, which if you've been careful or if you've been nosy, <laughs> you've already seen I guess, see if I can put it together. This one is, we call these dragon eggs. This one is especially pretty. Hold on, it's together. Look how big this is. This is a big one. This is geode three, and it is $80. It is also 80. a Chihuahua Tronca. It is a Chihuahua Tronca. Super pretty. One of the cool things about this one too, see this like lump that's here? So this one, whenever it's sitting, actually like sits up perfectly so that this side of it is facing outward which is quite a thing. So this is geode three and it is 80. Very big Game of Thrones vibes, for sure. So this is geode three. If no one claims these between now and the end, actually we put this one aside. David just wants to hold this one. It's fine. If anyone wants to claim one of those, you're more than welcome to. And if not, I will open them up and show them to you at the end of the party, if anyone is interested. And with that, let's move to the table. Oh, look, it's upside down. Oh, let me fix that. <laughs> One second. 
we'll switch. Don't want to make anybody drunk. I don't know how that happened. Pluto thing. It is, is it a Pluto thing to be upside down? Maybe. It's all about changing your perspective. Oh, David's teaching us. <laughs> I love it. Okay, here is our table for this afternoon. Um, we're going to start out with some obsidian, starting with two rainbow moonstones. This is all we've got left of the rainbow moonstones, just so you know. Um, we have... Excuse me, these are not rainbow moonstones. These are rainbow obsidians. Pardon me. Pardon me. Um, several pieces of obsidian, one of which is the last one that we have. We have a couple of pieces of mahogany obsidian. We're almost out of these two. These are the two largest pieces that we have left. Um, a couple of bracelets that'll bring you some Pluto stuff. Um, some malachite, some hematite, some gabbro indigo, which is something new that we have not even put on our site yet. I guess it is technically today, but it is not openly released on our site. Um, those tourmalinated quartz that I was speaking about previously, the zebra calcite that David was talking about um, earlier, some spirit quartz, some smoky quartz, and then things I'm most excited about, these uh, rutilated garden quartz back here. Got some gorgeous pieces. Gorgeous pieces and I cannot wait to show them to you. Um, Linda says, don't want to make anyone drunk. Also, when have I ever said that? Usually my goal is to make people drunk. <laughs> right? It's kind of my life's purpose. Good cocktails. Um, okay, perfect. All right, let's, let's get it. Let's get it started. I gotta turn on my camera. Have some tea. Is anyone sipping on anything fun? We we didn't talk about our tea today. Um, I am getting old. Um, Mary poured us some of our autumn tea, some of our uh, softened autumn tea. I want to know how many pumpkin spice lattes are in the crowd. There's probably at least one of you, right? Okay. Oh, I'm going to take off the lens cover. And otherwise, try to get my camera to turn on. Oh, <laughs> that was some cocktail shots. You see that? That was cute. Wouldn't that be awkward if that was something bad? Okay. Uh, right. Tasha says, is that the vodka steeped version? It is not. It's just the tea. Um, Sarah, feel free to add some to your cart. I do want to add, I did not mention this a moment ago, but um, there it is 70, or it's free domestic U.S. shipping on all orders over $75. Um, so keep that in mind as you are shopping. Um, but I'm ready to get this started. And I am starting with, oh, let me see if I can get this off. I also told David earlier today that we have got to get some polishing gloves because if I have to show obsidian one more time and then show you all my smudgy fingerprints, I'm going to be annoyed. Okay. So we are starting with Let's see if I can get my focus working. I feel ill prepared for this today. This is Halloween vibes maybe. Okay, we're gonna start with number one and this is a rainbow obsidian palm stone. So this one, this one is one of the least rainbowy ones that we have, but it's still there. You can't super see it, but there is some green happening there, and it, you can see even more on this side. Let me like polish it up again. Oh, I think you, oh yeah, you can see it here. So you'll see here this green area. You can see it in the right light. So this is rainbow moonstone. I don't find rainbow moonstone super often and almost never in um, palmstone form. Whenever we snag these, I was able to snag about half a dozen. Um, almost all gone, except for these last two. So this is number one, rainbow obsidian. I think I'm still calling it moonstone. If I've done that, apologies, it is obsidian. <laughs> and it is $33. 33 for number one. 
And I will say I'm looking at it even like up close, this sort of green situation here. You can sort of see it actually comes all the way out here. So it really is, there's a lot more there than you can see on this camera. Just so you know, trust me, it's gorgeous. Okay, also just broke a nail. <laughs> that happened, it's fine, I'm surviving. Some Pluto vibes saying, here, let's make this easier. <laughs> That's not what Pluto does. Mm -hmm. All right, next up we have number two. Check out the rainbowiness of this buddy. So here's number two, the last rainbow obsidian. Mm -hmm. Right? Look at the colors on this buddy. Also 33. So number two is 33. And these are kind of small for palm stones. Like, I mean, sometimes we'll show them to you as like a whole hand. <laughs> these are a little bit smaller. So nice pocket rock. You could stick this in your bra for a little lift <laughs> if you'd like. It could be a cutlet if you if you if you're interested. So number two is 33. And again, those are our last two rainbow obsidians, palm stones. All right, next up, I want to introduce you again. We had these at the party last week, but again, you can't do Pluto without bringing out all of the obsidian. So actually, let me I need to adjust my, oh, so much better. Okay. Here is number three. We have a nice cube. I love these cubes, guys. So these sit real cute like this. Have some strong Doctor Who vibes if, anyone's, if anyone knows what I'm talking about there. Um, we also have this little notch here, and this one is 47. So you can actually sit them like this. So they are, have like a bit more interest than just a cube. You can have a weird cube. So this is number three. It is 47. And we'll wipe off some smudges. Just mm -hmm. is what it is. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about that. So number three is 47. All right, next up, I brought this one out at the party last week. And I went to go find another sphere. Because why not show you something different? But this one is the best one. <laughs> I'm just going to say. This is the best one, so I brought it out again. So this is number four, and look at that silver sheen. This is the most silver sheeny of all of our spheres that we have in stock. So I had to bring this one back out, right? So this is number four, this beautiful sphere with this amazing um, silver sheen. I love it. So this guy is 60 for this silver sheen obsidian sphere. So Sarah asks, is it a TARDIS? So there was an episode uh, several doctors ago where the earth was overtaken by um, cubes. <laughs> Basically everyone woke up one day and there were cubes everywhere and then months later after they had incorporated them into their everyday lives they didn't turn into aliens, but they called the aliens, basically. Anyway, sometimes when I show it, people are like, oh, Doctor Who. So just wanted to let you guys know that I'm in that crowd. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right, so not quite the TARDIS, but part of the, part of the storyline. Okay, next up, we have number five. Number five is 135 for this huge, great sphere. And some of these, I don't think this is one of them. We do have some of these that have a, look, every time I touch it, I'm just making it smudgier and smudgier. Um, some of these do have some rainbow moonstone sheening to it. This one, not so much. Um, I always say everyone needs a sphere. <laughs> I do think these obsidian spheres are really next level amazing. So this guy is number five and is 135. And again, we will remove the smudges. <laughs> Just is what it is. 
And then for the big sphere that was on the table earlier, how much is the big sphere? It if anyone would like to start a savings account. Mary is confirming. $850 for that huge sphere that was on our table earlier. It is 35 pounds. Like, I can't pick it up and carry it around. I did one day, and I was afraid I was going to drop it. It is no joke. <laughs> Tasha, you, we can talk about it. <laughs> Tasha wants to put the big sphere on layaway. It is gorgeous. I'm actually, I'm going to have a really hard time letting go of that one. Not going to lie. Okay. But David says he will facilitate. <laughs> okay. Next up is number, hold on. Numbers. Number six. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I might have to turn. My arms aren't that long. Let's see. Number six. Oh, look how smudgy. Again, we'll polish that off. I just picked it up. Uh, is this obelisk, this obsidian obelisk. It's kind of fatter this way, a little skinnier this way. You'll see here, we have several of these in stock. This is a smaller size and is the last one we have of the smaller size. And these are gorgeous. Like if anyone's interested in starting to collect some of those larger sort of statement pieces, I think these obsidians are glorious. Um, really beautiful when they're not covered in fingerprints, <laughs> even when they're covered in fingerprints. So this one is number six and it is 155. And it is the last one we have in stock at that price point. Number six is 155. Next up, we have number seven, which is the next size up. And just to give a comparison of size, You see here, like this one, like this one by itself is not small <laughs> by any means. This is a good size rock. Next to this one, you'll see sort of the difference between these two. So this one is number six at 155. This one is number seven at 170. And again, like these are pretty hefty. You could protect yourself with this for sure kill white walkers. That was obsidian. So this is number seven, 170. Number six at 155. Okay. Now back to the other camera. That is all of the obsidian. All the shapes. All the shapes of obsidian. Let's move on to mahogany obsidian. These are so great and at a really great price point. So this one is number eight. Interesting little piece here. They're polished on one side, rough on the other sides with a polished bottom. Um, and this one is 34. 34 for this buddy. Love it, Dasha says dual protection, metaphysical and physical. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Here comes number nine. Number nine is more red than black. The other one was definitely had a bit more black in it. This could make a really interesting little bookend in case anyone's looking for something practical. Polished on this side. Rough on the remaining sizes, sides. <laughs> I don't know my words anymore. This one is also 34. So number nine is 34. I do love these mahogany pieces. We don't, we run into mahogany palm stones occasionally, but rarely cute little standing situations like this. Oh, Linda wants the, wants the black box. It's like I just can't remember the numbers. Nice, nice, nice. All right, number three. Linda has number three. I think you're going to like this black box. You can put it in your Doctor Who collection. <laughs> I like it. Like it. Oh, yes. Tasha is saying if obsidian feels weighty or too dark for you. And everyone, Tasha here is our crystal writer. <laughs> Just so you know. So listen to what she says. <laughs> um, 
then mahogany obsidian is definitely a lighter energy. Um, some people have a very difficult time with obsidian. Some people are even kind of repelled by it. Um, I do find that ma mahogany obsidian um, is easier for sure. Okay, next up we have, oh, just a couple of bracelets here. So onyx is actually one of those stones of, um, stones of Pluto, but, and we don't have any like big onyx pieces, though this bracelet, which is our, what is this bracelet? Is this the Frankie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Thank you. This is our Frankie bracelet. This is Merlinite, but this is black onyx. So we do have some of that in stock. It's just the wearable kind. So this is the Frankie bracelet. has black onyx and Merlinite. And then also black lava is a stone of Pluto. So this is our black lava um, Augusta bracelet. And they do come in singles. But they are really great for stacking. Um, love these a ton. We also have um, black lava in our triple wraps. So I'm actually wearing one of the triple wraps. Next time I turn my camera around, you will see. So that was the Augusta, also black lava, and the um, Augusta triple wraps. Next up, we're going to go into two malachite spheres. Indeed, Tasha says you can soak the black lava stones in essential oils. That is fact. Absolutely fact. <laughs> oh, that Mary did say that too. You guys are funny. Who's getting who a Coke? We do that. Could it be Jack and Coke? You don't like Jack and Coke, Tasha. I forgot about that. Never mind. Good whiskey and Coke? <laughs> Funny. Okay, perfect. So here is Malachite. This is number, hold on, let me check my numbers. Here's number 10. This beautiful Malachite sphere. We have a couple of these in stock, and it's fun pulling out some really beautiful ones. <laughs> Mary is like sighing over here. <laughs> over the Malachites? Yes, over the Malachites. These are gorgeous. So this is number 10. It is 64. Look at this, buddy. Ooh, I love it so much. I always find Malachite to be a really, I think it's interesting that this is a Pluto stone, Pluto slash Scorpio stone, because it's green, very much so heart chakra, um, heart chakra and prosperity, those sort of things, but it's definitely, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is that transformation stone, right? Because really, that is what Pluto is all about. It's transformation, alchemy. It's taking something that was and turning it into something new. Like, not like adding to it, but transforming it into something new. And I do think that Malachi is one of the stones that is great for that. Oh, I like that, Tasha. Okay, so this is number 11. See, this one is very different. It has a very, um, this very light band. Super interesting piece. This is the only one we have that looks quite like this. Indeed. David thinks this looks like food coloring in liquid. <laughs> And I agree. I agree before it gets all mixed up. So this one is number 11, and it is also 64. I love these Malachite spheres. I've mentioned before, pardon me for anyone who is here often and hears me repeat these things, but we often have new folks in here too. Um, we don't find a lot of Malachite. It's not something that is a very plentiful stone. And usually when we do find it, it's in the shape of a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So um, it is, it's nice to find things like cute, simple spheres um, because they are somewhat rare. Okay, next up we have number 12. We're going to go into hematite. Hematite is a really great, super grounding stone, really like, <laughs> yes, dolphins, or like bears or turtles. Um, it is often turned into little animals, <laughs> right? I'm going to Google why. Please do. I'd love to know what you find out. 
Um, so hematite is really great for keeping you grounded, especially within the upheaval that Pluto can often cause. Um, so I had to bring, and these are our last two pieces of hematite that we have, period, into this party because um, it's so great if you're feeling the struggle of Pluto and like everyone always does. Um, hematite can be really great. So this is a hematite wand. Um, it is number 12 and it is $30. I will say that these do stand, but this one in particular stands a little crooked. <laughs> it stands like this. If you do it this way, it seems straight, but if you do it this way, it's kind of crooked. Um, so this will be really great for a lay down piece or if you're looking for a leaning tower. So this one is number 12 and it is 30. I also love this situation up in here. Look how great that is. I love hematite. So good. Very hefty. All right, next one and last one, last hematite that we have in stock, period. We struggle with finding hematite sometimes. It comes in and out. Look how sparkly that is. This is number 13. It is also 30. Also have this really great situation up here too. This one does stand up straight if you are looking for something that stands up and you want it to be straight. Number 13 is 30. All right, next we're gonna move into something that we have not ever carried here before and haven't shown anyone yet except for some virtual shoppers. <laughs> so we do do that. Oh, Tasha says, no real reason why Malachi is so often polished and made into shapes. Just that it's really pretty polished and a lot of people like to wear it, like it. It also makes me, like, depending on where things are processed, like if things are processed in a place where the people who are processing them are artsy, <laughs> They're probably going to want to carve them into different shapes, right? Whereas someone who has limited art <laughs> abilities or limited um, tools, the what comes out of those minds is going to be a little simpler. So I think that often has a lot to do with it too. Oh, like it, Tasha. I will say these Malachites are African. Correct, David? Am I lying about that? Nope, that's true. Okay, so next up we have number 14. This is Indigo Gabbro. Um, these are seriously beautiful. Um, and it's sort of a, conglom a conglomeration of several different kinds of stone. Mm -hmm. They make this up. It's also often known as Mystic Merlinite. So a moment ago, I showed you the Frankie bracelet. This is known as Merlinite. It's one of my favorite stones, personally, and this is Mystic Merlinite. So this is number 14. Sorry, I'm forgetting what I'm doing. I'm just staring at it. Uh, this is number 14, and it is $35. And this is one of those, like, very large palm stones, as you can see. Love these. So that is the first of those that we have on the table. And here's the second one. Same size, slightly different shape. Here is number 15, also $35. And this one I think is a little bit lighter. That's probably the biggest difference. Also, do you see some flashing happening in here? One of the stones that is in Indigo Gabbro is Feldspar. And, um, oh, look at that. Look at these. And um, Labradorite. Very flashy Labradorite is a type of feldspar. So you do get some flashing in here as well. I love these. These are fascinating. Fascinating stones. So this is number 15. It is 35. Next up, we're going to go into our tourmalinated quartz which I've mentioned before and will continue to mention forever and ever, is one of my favorite stones. Having one of these whenever I was a kid is what got me into loving stones. They are fascinating. So these black strands that you see here are actually black tourmaline, which I mentioned earlier. It's a really great stone for staying protected and grounded and even, um, especially in hard Pluto times. Um, and it being in... Um, 
quartz just amplifies those properties. So this is number 16, this cute little buddy, and it's $20. Mm, I love it. Look how cute this is. So $20 for this guy. Um, I also know someone who kept one of these in their pocket for a very, very long time uh, when going through a um, serious phase of burnout. This is an interesting one. You can see there's a single sort of shot of black tourmaline in here. Makes it very adorable. This is number 17. And it is $20 as well. Look how cute this is. I love it. Okay, we also have these in palm stones, and our stock of these palm stones is getting quite dwindled. I actually think we might only have this one and one other one left. But I snagged my favorite of the two that are left. This is a tourmalinated quartz palm stone. You'll see just a couple little shots. There's some smaller threads in here. More here on the back. This is number 18. It is also only $20. And this is a great steal on these. $20 for number 18. Last but not least, in the world of tourmalinated quartz, ooh, this one's got rainbows and is flashing at me. Take a sip and I'll show it to you. Here is a tourmalinated quartz, oh, that's hard, it's hard to say, tourmalinated quartz sphere and is gorgeous. I love these. I have one of these in my personal collection. See these rainbows? I wonder if I could get that to flash for you oh, right in there. Look at that. I will go crazy if something is flashing at me. Some more in here. Lots in here. I love these guys. Love them. And I feel like this is a good size for a sphere. So this is number, mm, let me check my numbers. <laughs> This is number 19, and it is 64. Has some nice large threads in here. Love these. Number 19 is 64. Okay, next, I'm gonna get the zebra calcite. I think I'll be able to show one of these in this camera, but I think I'm gonna have to turn my other camera on for these, or for the other one. This is number 20. This is a super interesting stone in that it's relatively new. It only was sort of unearthed relatively recently. It is number 20, and this is zebra calcite. So it forms in these layers. David, you're reading about these layer formations. Anything interesting that you can? Yeah, it's like basically little folds. Folds. In the earth's like crust. <laughs> folds yeah. in the earth crust. Yeah. Oh, that's getting like in there. Oh. Minerals being layered in. <laughs> Perfect, David. Perfect. Yeah. It doesn't tell you what they are specifically. I looked at it too. Right. Super cool stone. Super cool stone. Um, this one is 122. So number 20 is 122 for this chunk of zebra calcite. Yes, on the listing, that's a medium. Right, uh, Mary's saying on the listing it's medium size. Uh, and then Tasha over here is, it says, like rings in a tree. You guys may not know this, but David has his master's in geography and his research in tree ring science. So, is this why you were so attached to these? David saw these and was like, I want. <laughs> it's very funny. Okay, I'm going to turn this around so I can show you number 21, which is a larger piece of the zebra calcite which so gorgeous. Y'all are a bunch of hippies is what Tasha said. Y'all, <laughs> I didn't do tree ring science. I, I love it. Not a hippie, so. 
<laughs> David said he went to App State. That is not a hippie college. It's like the most hippie college. Um, Linda says, this calcite is beautiful. Ask Poppy about how they form. I'll let you know. All right, so here is number 21. This is another piece of zebra calcite. Um, this one, the stripes are up and down on the way it's like all polished up, whereas the other one was par parallel to the table, whatever. Um, I like this. So like, it looks very simple, and then you're like, bam, it ain't. Um, this one is 177. So this really gorgeous chunk, polished chunk is 177. I like these. I like these a lot. <laughs> Parallel to the marching surface, as we say in the army. I like it. I like it. Okay. Next up, we're going to go into some spirit quartz. And as you guys are looking at this, at the end, I'm always happy to go back and compare things or let you see things again, whatever it may be. But we're going to move forward with some spirit quartz. I would say this is the most shocking um, stone for me in terms of Pluto and Scorpio. However, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. Um, I had mentioned earlier how working with Pluto and learning about Pluto, like I learned to very much so sort of love and respect the energy of Pluto. Um, and like, I think it's because I finally found the sparkles. <laughs> if that makes sense. Also, Spirit Quartz is very much so a stone of transformation. So it is aligned, even if it is so very different from all of the other stones on the table. So this one is number 22, and it is $17. $17. I love these. The coolest formations. Here's number 23. You'll see here, one of the things I love about these, like that's not a single point here. There's like three or four points going on up there, covered in like hundreds of points. I love it. So this is number 23, and it is also 17. And these are a little more purple than they are showing up on screen here, just so you know. Look at this little point, buddy. I love it. All right, and next up is number 24. You have several points here. You have this main point and this one too. Phallic quartz formation, yep. That is very much so what these do. And um, another way to think about it, for anyone who's like a little more familiar with those like first few planets, is Pluto, Pluto is just another octave of Mars. So yeah, to phallic quartz formations, <laughs> for sure, for sure. So this is number 24, and it is 17. All right, now we're going to get into some smoky quartz. First, I'm going to bring you this little cluster. This little cluster is our last smoky quartz cluster. Super cool little, little formation. This is number 25, and it is $42. Number 25 is 42. And smoky quartz, right, look at the clarity of this, buddy. Smoky quartz is great for Pluto stuff because of the sort of protection and grounding, but also the clarity that you need when going through Pluto situations. So number 25 is 42. Sold 24. Gotcha, Lynn. Oh, I'm so glad here. I'm going to show it to you one more time. <laughs> Look at that, buddy. Oh, I do love these, these spirit cords. So perfect. Gotcha, Lynn. David is setting that aside for you. I'm going to go to number 26. So 26 is, this looks very light. You might think that it is just clear quartz, but it is lightly smoky. Lightly smoky point. I think this is the last one we have of this size. All the other smoky quartz points that we have are 
significantly smaller. This is a good size little point, not too terribly large, but like not a tiny one. It is polished. This is number 26 and it is 45. 45 and OMG, I never noticed this before. It actually, I think there's some, there are some inclusions here, which would make this technically a garden quartz. And looking at the bottom of it, see these lines? It has phantoms, which literally we've had this one in stock for a hot minute, and I've never noticed this before. It's the cool thing about crystals. You can look at one literally every day for years and still see new features about it. So this is number 26, and it is 45 for that cute little buddy. Okay, I have a couple of the smaller smoky quartz here. We have number 27, significantly darker. Still pretty transparent. If you hold it up to the sun, oh yeah, you can totally see through it. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So this is number 27 and it is 25 for this guy. I love these. Um, here in the office, right when you open the door to come in, I have a little display up. And the display, since we set it up, has been a white calcite, which we showed a couple of parties ago, several parties ago, I think now, and these smoky quartz points. And it's beautiful. Okay, perfect. Laurie wants sold smoky quartz 27. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, we have one more of these on the table. This, oh, I just lost my camera. Bringing it back. Okay, this is number 28. This one is a little bit smaller than the previous one, but similar in all other ways. Also, I think you can see through this one a bit better. This one is also 25. So number 28 is 25. Oh yeah, you can totally see my fingers back there. These are cute. So I was saying though, my little display is smoky quartz and calcite, and it is quite dreamy, quite dreamy. Good vibes. Okay, now I'm gonna go into a couple of palm stones, smoky quartz palm stones, which I always love these when we get these in stock. Each one of them is always so different and so beautiful. Here is number 29. And look at it. <laughs> you guys know how nerdy I will get over these. Look at this gorgeousness. So this beautiful little palm stone, like small buddy. This is number 29. Oh, I love it. And it is $18. It's so only 18 for this bit of perfection. <laughs> I don't mean to sound salsy. I just really effing love these. Sold 29 to Amanda. Perfect. Oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. All right. Next up, we have number 30. I'm going to move the sticker so you can get the, the full effect. Look at this one. <laughs> Look at it. Okay, so this one is number 30. And it's just also beautiful. It's a little bit darker than the previous one. A little less clear, but for me, that always just means more things to look at. <laughs> and this one is also 18. So number 30 is 18. Isn't that great? What in the world? What is it? It's smoky quartz. So this is a smoky quartz palm stone. I love these. Love these. So smoky quartz palms or smoky quartz is clear quartz that has been subject to radiation in the Earth's course, uh, Earth's crust. Um, they're fine. They're not emitting radiation or anything like that by any means. But it does cause the the clear quartz to get a smoky hue. And the darkness is an indicator of how much radiation it got. 
So there are lighter ones that just got a little bit. There are darker ones that got a lot more. Sometimes you'll even get them. We have a couple, especially I think the Lemurians that we have, you can see sort of layers of radiation with it. So like one side will be super dark while the other side will be less dark. Um, it causes these really amazing features in the, clear, in the smoky quartz. But they're safe. Don't let that like freak you out. <laughs> they're not emitting radiation in this moment by any means. Okay, so this is number 31. This is a slightly larger one. Look at the clarity of this. Has some, this right here in the right light. Well, look at those rainbows. That's what I was going for. See the rainbows in this one? So this is number 31 and it is $22. So a different price point. And be sure, Amanda, whenever you're adding this into your cart to put the right price point. You've got an $18 one. And this one is a $22 one. Aren't these great? Oh, I love these. <laughs> really love these. All right, that's number 31. Okay, next up we're gonna get into, I saved my favorite for last today. I don't always do that. I was thinking it was probably like bad. <laughs> like I probably shouldn't do that, but I really wanted to just save these for last. So another one of those stones for Pluto is rutilated quartz. And rutilated quartz, ta-da, is um, quartz that has in it ruti. Oh, sold 31 and 30. Got you both. Okay, 31 to Lynn. And then 30 to Erica. Got you both. Perfect. Perfect. You guys are going to love these. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They're mind blowing. Okay, back to the rutilated though. So you see these lines going through this crystal. This is known as rutile in the business. Um, and is actually threads of titanium that have grown through the quartz. So you'll see them flashing in here. See that really gorgeous, like glistening thread through there? And they shoot all the way through and they're glorious. So this is number 32. It is 328. And this is from a batch of garden quartz that we got that literally has some of the most mind-blowing specimens we have ever seen. Sometimes you just sit and look at them. <laughs> In fact, look, you'll see this beautiful one through here. So this is number 32. And if anyone is looking, look at the rainbows in here. Oh my God. If anyone is looking for a mind-blowing crystal, these garden quartzes, quartzes are not going to disappoint. So this is number 32 and it is 328. Oh, I love these. Perfect. Okay, next up we have number 33. Okay, this one is one of my favorites from the entire bunch. <laughs> This, okay, so Mary's talking about lodolite. So garden quartz, lodolite, all sort of the same thing. Um, this one's inclusions or this one's rutile is a little more of the rose gold variety. It's not gold, it is all titanium. Um, but it's definitely a little more pink slash red. You'll see here, look at all of that. See it glistening through. These are amazing pieces. You can see this extra thick one going through right there. Beautiful, beautiful pieces that are so stunning. Look at them flashing. Oh, <laughs> I love showing these so much. Okay, this is number 33 and it is a 199. 199. And there can be so many things included. So actually here, I think, this sort of spot right here. Actually, I'm not even sure what that is now. I was about to say, I think that might be hematite. But the thing about um, 
garden courses that there are so many inclusions. That's what makes them look like total little universes. That blows my mind. Okay, I'll stop showing this. This is number 33, <laughs> and it is a $1.99. Love it. All right, I have two smaller ones in case anyone's wanting some of these but not wanting to break the bank to do it. We have this tiny buddy. Also, this one has more, it's more of a coppery tone, the color of these rutile. Look how cute this is. <laughs> I love these. So this is number 34. So beautiful, and it is 54. Number 34 is $54. I love these. Oh, sold 34. Got you, Laurie. Got you. All right, here's the last, last one on the table today. I don't want to take the sticker off so that. It doesn't obstruct your view. <laughs> All right, here is number 35. This is also a very special piece. This one has the tiniest little rutile all through it. it. Has more rutile than all the other ones, and they're tiny, which gives it the most beautiful look. And it's this interesting little shape. Great for your pocket, <laughs> or like sitting on your desk. So this one is number 35. Also this one, the rutile on this one is a little bit more silver. So as well as some of the other ones were coppery or a little more like rose gold colored. These are very much so silver. Oh, look at that. <laughs> All right, and this one is number 35. It is $36. And of all of the garden courts that we got, this one is the smallest slash least expensive piece. So number 35 is 36. Oh, Erica got 35. Gotcha, lady. It's gorgeous. You're going to love it. Absolutely love it. And with that, right, good choice indeed. With that, um, that is all of the crystals that we have on the table today. Um, I think we will in the future do a whole party of garden quartz, um, some garden quartz and probably amphibolite that we also have. So these quartzes that have these beautiful inclusions um, that really just are mind blowing. Um, and Erica, that piece was $36. 36 for that buddy. Um, so we will be doing more of the garden courts in the future for sure. But coming up, or now that we are done, how much was number 34? Um, 34 was 54. 54, Laurie, for number 34. Number 34 was $54. <laughs> Hope that helps. Um, you had a weirdo amethyst last week that I want. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Yep, the scepter. Also, you should Google like healing properties of scepters, just so you know, because that even has um, has their its own properties. So just confirm, Erica. We'll call this number thirty six. Confirm that you want this, buddy. It's beautiful and weird. It's twenty seven dollars. So like a growth. Can I get that one? Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. I will put this one aside for you for sure. Okay, um, Mary is going to put the listing right here for you. It's like, the listing is even weird. Like, it's just like sort of an odd last piece that we had in this collection. That may be like the last crystal that we bought. Oh my God. <sighs> Can I tell you a fun story about this crystal? Because you're right, David. Um, $27. Yes, it is. So this is the last crystal that... Um, I bought on my very first rock shopping trip. Just so you know, like for whatever reason, this, this weird little buddy. And it's because it was like all the other ones were definitely like points. And this one is a point, but it's just like, I think unless you see it in person or like you, Erica, you just know that there's something amazing about it. Um, it's sort of unassuming, but the last crystal 
from the first rock shopping trip I ever did. That's all the next one. No, actually, that's a lie. It was the second rock. It was the second rock shopping trip. But still, I love it. It's so early I days. yeah, it was early days. I love that guy. I'm glad that he's going to you. Perfect. Um, okay, can I see number 19 again? Absolutely. <laughs> Sarah, absolutely. And then Laurie, we see you just made Mary gasp over there. Um, okay, so Sarah, let me show you 19. What is number 19? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes, girl, I will show you number 19. Let me put this. Um, make sure I'm reading. Can I see 19 again if it didn't sell? Absolutely. Let me put this over here. So here is 19. And this one is filled with rainbows. Like there's some rainbows flashing in here. Um, beautiful, like large rutilations, rutiles. I think I'm making up the word rutilation, but it's fine. Um, so this is number 19 and it is 64. 64. All right, sold. Oh, Sarah, confirm. So, oh, sorry, 19. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Absolutely. You are going to love, 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 love that sphere. I'm very excited about that. Okay, and then, hold on. There was another one, another request here. Oh, Laurie said, oh, what? <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay, Erica, I'm also seeing you're 25. So, Laurie, let me, uh, let me just confirm for me number four. This is a very beautiful sphere with that silver sheen. Look at it. And this is literally the faces that I'm making whenever you guys can't see me and I'm just holding stuff up. So confirm for me that you would like sold four. And I'll put this one aside and then Mary's gonna cry herself to sleep tonight. <laughs> I love it. Mary, we'll get more. <laughs> we will get more. Gotcha. So your Laurie would like number four. I love it. So that one is 60. Can you confirm that that's the price point for that? It is. It is. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Are you crying over there, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> no. Love it. Okay. And then Erica would like to see 25 again. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Actually, I thought of you whenever I picked this one up, just so you know. I will actually turn my other camera around here so you can really see it. So here's number 25. This super cute smoky quartz. It's not like a super dark smoky quartz, but it's definitely, like especially in person, definitely a smoky quartz. And a good test for everyone, um, if you have a quartz, one of the ways that you can see if it's smoky, because smoky can be very light, is to put it on a white piece of paper. So like even like this background is white, right? Like when you do that, it's quite obvious that it's not clear that there is sort of a brown smoky tone to it. So this is number 30, nope, 25, and it is $42. This cute little cluster, like it. Okay, Erica would like to see the palm stone that she picked again. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remembered. So here's your palm stone. There's a sticker on it. Let me see. Take the sticker off. Here's your little palm stone. It's a good one. And even, so you can even see too, I'll show you the difference in color between these two, right? Just varying shades of smoky quartz. Like it. <laughs> if anyone would like to see Lemurians, smoky Lemurians, David's like, let's get those out too. I love it. Okay, perfect. Let me know if there is anything else that you guys would like to see. Anything else from the table specifically, or I'm also open to opening up to more whatever things other virtual shopping scenarios. So let me know if there's anything on the table that you would like to see, anything that you're deciding on that you'd like to claim for yourself, or anything at all from our website that you would like to see in person. Are you ready to come back around to those geodes? Oh my God, David's reminding me of the geodes, which I totally did forget. If anyone is interested in seeing those geodes, 
actually first, if anyone's interested in claiming an un, it is open, we have cracked it for you, um, a geode that you have not seen the inside, let me know and I can show them unopened again. Um, and they, they range from price point at, uh, how much is this one? <laughs> twenty two eighty. which David hid. Um, and then with a, so $20 geode, a $42 geode, and then a, excuse me, $43, $43 geode. David just wants people to buy the geodes for sure. And then the $80 geode, because the more people buy, the more he gets to crack. See, like it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Um, so if anyone would like to see them unopened, to claim one for yourself, so you get the pleasure of seeing it Revealing it for the first time in your hands, let me know. Otherwise, let me know if anyone would like to see one of those opened. I can go through them opened if people are interested in seeing. Wait just a sec, sip my tea. Or other things as well. If there's anything on the table you would like me to go back and see. Oh. <laughs> David's here reading your message there, Tasha. Um, if there's anything on the table you'd like to go back and see again or anything just on our site in general you would like to see, I'm completely open to do. <laughs> Perfect. Sarah wants to see them open. Gotcha. I'm totally Sarah, down. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. I will say too, these bigger sort of harder ones, we do, we crack ourselves because they're thick. Um, we did also um, purchase some crack at home geodes. So they're thinner walled, so you can crack them with just a hammer that you have at home. So if it is something, especially if you have kids or grand or just want to do it yourself, you don't need to have kids to crack a geode. Um, start with the dragon egg. Noted. We can do that. Um, we do have some crack at home geodes as well. So these geodes we crack here because you're not going to be able to crack them open with a rock, with a hammer. Um, definitely not with a rock. But uh, we also have crack at home geodes. So thinking about like, I got it. <laughs> uh, thinking about Christmas stockings. Um, I don't know, hanging out with kids. If you're going to do any of that, crack at home geodes. Have them in stock. Okay, so here's the dragon egg. So this is a, tell me what it is, eighty dollar Chihuahua, Chihuahua tronca. This is what it looks like on the inside. So this one has some beautiful bulbous chalcedony. Petroidal. Yeah. Petroidal. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Isn't this gorgeous? And this is the one that I was saying. So this is geode three. If anyone would like to claim geode three, you're more than welcome to. This one, because of this like extra growth here, sits, well, maybe not in my hand, sits perfectly like this. So you can set this on your bookshelf or your desk and like it is showing itself off. No extra effort required, which I think is great. So this, and this one is very sparkly. I feel like it's not even, oh, there you go. Right? Super sparkly, super gorgeous. So this is Geode 3, $80. I if anyone would like to claim it. It has quartz and calcite, David is telling me. I love these. Here you go, David. Take it away. Okay, next up we're going to do geode three. So Actually, that was geode three. We're working backwards from the way we did it earlier. This is geode two. This is a $43 coconut. I'm learning. Oh, you ready for this? Okay, so like outside, this is the thing I love about these. Look how like unassuming... Like, oh, that's just a beautiful round rock. And so it looks like on the inside. Look at that sparkle. <laughs> what? So this is Geode 2. This is a $43 coconut. Isn't that so pretty? I think it's interesting we got a dark one for Pluto and Scorpio. Oh. Because they can range. This is the one that has like very big range of uh, minerals. Can, can you guys hear him? Am I like repeating what he says uselessly or can you not hear him? <laughs> and just, just let me know. Because if you hear him, I won't repeat him. If you can't hear him, I will let you know what he said. Perfect. And then Geo 
Tasha's OMG. Sometimes. She, so what he was saying, he thought it was interesting that that one came out dark. Um, Pluto and Scorpio. Pluto's not in Scorpio. It's just Pluto and Scorpio. If you want to get to that's me being an ass. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, he is a bit of a mumbler. Um, he, um, because these crystal or these geodes in particular can have so many different kinds of crystals on the inside. We've literally opened them before and had like these beautiful calcite formations, um, amethyst inside of them. They can be super light. They can be super dark. They are fascinating. Um, so that one did come out, one of the dark ones. And it's very pretty. All right, and this, this is Geode 1. This is a $20 Chihuahua Tronca. Chihuahua Tronca. I'm never going to get these right. Oh, this one's beautiful too. Um, what color is inside Geode? So it depends on what kind they are, for sure. Um, this one. Geode 2. Oh, Lynn got Geode 2. Perfect. I think she wants to know what color Oh, wait. Okay, gotcha. Never mind. I may have gotten very excited about that. Um, so this one, it's it's almost like a chocolate brown. Well, let me put it on the other camera. Let's see. I do want you guys to see how pretty this is. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. So this is one half of it. That's one of the fun things about these two is that you get... Um, both halves. Look how sparkly that is. So that's one half. And so it's like a chocolate brown, like some melted on vanilla ice cream. <laughs> right? And is gorgeous. Gorgeous. So that's number. That's geode two. And again, if anyone would like to snag one of these, just go ahead and do sold geode two or three, or now I'll come back and show you geode one. So here's one half of geode one. What? Look at the rainbow. So this is calcite. This is a, a calcite all inside of this thing. It's beautiful like large point here. These are fascinating. And we are selling these like through the holidays and things too. So if you want to gift one of these to anyone, so, who look at that big formation there. That's like a huge buddy. If you are looking to gift one of these, you can also, because they're pairs, we also often have people who will do like couple gifts or like best friends or sibling gifts uh, where one of you takes one half and the other takes the other half. We are selling and sending these cracked. So on our website, you can, you know, search for geode, snag one of the geodes. Oh, perfect. Lynn got number two. Sold geode two for Lynn. Got you. David is over here like <laughs> staring at it. Pieces that look, at first you may think they look like some Here, come here, of, come here. It's a little bit pieces of goatite. Oh, David is finding some goatite in here. There's another piece. Yeah? That black bottom. It's like not a... Oh, it's, yep, there. It's like Drew's everywhere. Yep, right? that little piece. What is that, David? Oh, I'd be lying if I told you. He said he'd be lying if he told us what it was. So we're not going to listen. There's like... That's one of the cool things about these in particular is there are so many things on the inside. So many. So I'm going to go back to geode number one here. Anyway, just looking at it. We are selling these. We will ship them to you cracked. Um, if you decide you would like to snag some for any holiday gifts. We also will probably be doing some more of these through some of the parties over the next couple of weeks too. Maybe just like a live crack and party. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, yep. Yeah, David wants me to show you the big one on this camera. See, you can see how sparkly it is. So this is the Dragon Egg slash Geode 3. Here's side number one with its bitroidal formations. <laughs> Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love these. That's one side. And here's the second side that stands up so beautifully. 
you can see how sparkly that is. Oh, this camera is definitely superior. Look how gorgeous. OMG. Oh, falling away. Love these. So this one is geode 3 and it is 80. Okie doke. And with that, folks, bringing it back around. We're ready to start wrapping up. It's time to start checking out. Um, <laughs> Lynn says, looks like an alien on the outside of geode 2. Like it. Like it. Perfect. Oh, thank you, Sarah. This has been a ton of fun. If you are done and you have claimed something for yourself, it's time to start the checkout process. Um, Mary, make sure Lynn gets a link for that geode mm -hmm. that she snagged um, for sure. And yeah, otherwise we're still here for a few. I'm going to wait around for a few more seconds, see if anyone has any other requests or wants to see anything from the table or otherwise. We are here to do so. Otherwise we can start wrapping up. My hands are like Real dusty, y'all. Perfect. Ah, oh, thank you, Laurie and Tasha. This is always fun. My favorite way to spend my Friday evenings. Um, I do very much so look forward to a time when we can all hang out together. But until then, this this does just fine. I can gasp about rocks all day. Uh, this is a ton of fun. So thank you guys for coming and sharing this with us, for hanging out with us on your Friday before Halloween. I hope you guys have a spectacular day. I will be making some mashed potatoes that are probably shaped like ghosts. It's going to be fun. <laughs> a ton of fun. David wants to crack another geode. That'll probably happen at some point. Um, perfect. It has been a blast hanging out with everyone. If you need any help along the way, feel free to email us at hello at almanacsupplyco.com. Um, also, if you're catching this as a replay and there are anything, um, any things that you would like to snag for yourself, you can email us at hello at almanacsupplyco.com and we will assist you in whatever way it is that we can. Um, otherwise, for everyone who joined us live, thank you for being here, for coming and sharing this with us. We do love doing this. Oh, and I will say too, we are taking a break next week. Um, we are like, we're already feeling the like holiday jiviness. Um, so we want to take a week break before coming back full steam ahead with some um, with some holiday crystal parties for you. So we will not be around next, I'm going to get my dates open for you, um, on November 6th, but we will be back on November 13th, which is a Friday the 13th. I think that should be fun. Extra fun. Uh, we will be back on Friday the 13th, November 13th, for our next crystal party. I'm not really sure what the theme is quite yet, um, but I will be shooting it on an email to let everyone know. Thank you again so much. Any last words or anything from you guys? All good? David says thank you. So does Mary. Um, all right, you guys take care, and we will see you guys in two weeks. Cheers. <laughs>